Welcome to Reader Programming. This is the very first video of my very new series, uh, Let's Program. Uh, basically, the point of this series is to teach brand new people interested in programming uh, how they can start getting a foothold into the wonderful world of programming that I really have come to love. Um, it really isn't as hard as what a lot of people might think. Um, basically, it's just maybe a little bit of reading um, in the with, as far as Java is concerned. Um, there's a lot of information on the internet, uh, and the best part is that the programming software required can be found for free, and it's really awesome. Um, we will be using Java and we will be using Eclipse. Uh, the newest version of Eclipse at this time is Juno. Um, I've used it pretty often. Probably by now 200 programming hours. Um, I have to say it's a really good IDE. Alright, so how do we get started? Uh, first of all, I'm doing this in a virtual machine. So it may be a little bit slower than what a normal computer can handle. Um, reason for that is, one, I want to be able to show you how to use the um, install the Java runtime. Uh, secondly, I don't feel the need to broadcast what I have on my hard drive. So let's get started. I already have this downloaded, but I want to show you how you can download it yourself. All right, so we're going to first go to Google because it's just the fastest way to find our way to the website. We're going to type in Eclipse Download, and then we're going to go down to the Eclipse website. You can also just type in, instead of Google, eclipse.org slash downloads. That'll take you right to where you want to go. You'll see here that there are a whole bunch of different possibilities. Basically, it doesn't really matter too much which one of these you choose. Uh, you can always find the correct plugins afterwards for whatever it is you would like to do. I, however, chose Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. And I also chose a 32-bit download. So, once you click on there, you will be redirected to a mirror page uh, where you can download Eclipse from a server nearest to you so that it's faster. Again, I already did this. <coughs> doesn't take too long. Uh, I believe it took me about five minutes. <clears throat> I can close that one right away. And that gives me then this zip file, which I then extracted right there. First thing we want to do, though, is we want to download and then install the Java runtime. A lot of people probably may not know this, but Java is an interpreted language. Basically what that means is when I compile my program, it's going to produce something called bit code. Sounds pretty intense, but all of that is is a between language, so to speak, between what you type and what your computer understands. What the Java runtime does is it takes that bit code and then translates it again into a language that your computer can understand. Sounds complicated. All you need to know is that you need the Java runtime. So how do we find it? Well, you can go again to Google, type in Java runtime download, and it will lead you to a site where you can download it, or you can type in this URL 
and you can get there yourself. java.com slash en or whatever language um, slash download. Then we just click on Java download. It'll take us to a licensing agreement page and then you can download it. It takes maybe four seconds to download. So we can now close this. And now we're going to install the Java runtime. And it's quick and install. This only takes a couple of minutes. There's a, probably going to be a couple of people wondering why I choose Java over maybe a language like C Sharp or uh, some other language. I choose Java because Java is one of the most important languages for people who are just learning the program. The reason for that is Java, almost to a fault, follows the philosophies of object-oriented programming. Um, that makes it slightly more complicated because you really have to know the library well and some things that you think are logical and should work really don't unless if you go for the correct uh, class. Um, sounds complicated at this point, uh, but we'll get into that and I'm going to be going into all of the different parts of object-oriented programming. Uh, language like C Sharp, yeah, is a pretty good language to start with. However, I find Java a little better uh, to start out with because it's uh, basically because of the IDE. Um, Eclipse, very user-friendly. Licensing agreement, very friendly. Uh, there are IDEs for C Sharp, which is a Microsoft language, uh, that are also free, but I find that they're just not as good. So let's continue with the Java runtime. Next, and that will install. There are other languages such as C++. Uh, that's an awesome language to get into later on if you want to get into uh, game programming. Um, you can also do game programming in Java. Um, there are reasons for it, reason against it. Uh, Basically, for every project that you're going to plan on doing over the years, um, there's a language that's best made for it. There are debates as to what language is best. I personally think Java is pretty good because you program it once, you run it anywhere. That is also a reason that people use C Sharp, but again, for right now, we're going to be using Java. All right, so the Java runtime is now installed. We're going to click Close. And right now, I have my Eclipse folders on the desktop. It's really not a good place for them. A place that you could use is uh, your Documents folder. Another place, and we're going to play, be placing that right now, control C. We're going to be actually putting it into the program's file. You will have to give administrative uh, permission to do this. Uh, also, with some things, uh, that you would like to do in Eclipse, you're also going to have to run it as an administrator 
uh, it's really not that big of a deal. It's just that if something doesn't work, no, you have to press on the executable file as an administrator. That's just going to take a couple of minutes to run. I would like to also just take a moment uh, to say if you would like to know something in particular about programming, if you have a special request as far as a tutorial is concerned, please let me know in the comments and I will get to them. You can also email me through my website. Uh, that's uh, going to be posted in the, in the about section. Uh, it's greg at readerprogramming.com, programming with one M. The point of uh, pretty much what we're going to be doing in this series is go over the very basics of object-oriented programming, uh, what makes it so popular, why is it important, and then we're going to deal with how to program basic things in Java. Uh, go over a couple of the most important library functions, and um, yeah, it's probably going to be it until I really get requests from the comments. I can also do tutorial type stuff um, regarding JavaScript. HTML development, although that's really, HTML is not a programming language, it's more of a, you know, something a little more funky. <laughs> uh, it's more of a descriptive language. Um, I can do C Sharp. I'm not as fluent in C Sharp as I am in, in Java, but I can hold my own. Um, as far as Lotus Notes is concerned, uh, which is an IBM product, I can do some things with uh, Lotus Script and XPage development. Uh, if anybody is interested in knowing anything about those particular languages, let me know. I can make a video. All right, so we now have Eclipse stored in our C drive. So let's open this puppy up. And we're going to say here, create shortcut. Yes, we want the shortcut to be on the desktop and we can pin this right to the taskbar so it's easier to find in the future. So we can close that. Another thing we're going to do is we're going to go into Documents and we're going to create a special folder for something called a workspace. What your workspace is, is a place to store all of your projects. Uh, you can create this when you start Juno, when you start Eclipse. However, I find it a little more simpler to do it beforehand because I can see very easily where it's going. So let's start this up. We're going to say run, but don't always ask me. The splash screen here is a little different than previous versions. I personally really like the colors better. I tend to also store all of the zip files for my Eclipse versions. Really don't have a reason as to why I do that. I just tend to do it. All right, so we can now pick 
our workspace, here's the point where you can uh, also create a new fault folder. You can cre create it here as well, or kind of string over there. But we're going to do it here. So basically, libraries, documents, my documents, workspace. Okay. Use default and do not ask again. This option can be helpful can also be annoying. I personally like to always choose which workspace I'm in at the beginning of my session and I don't want to have a default but that's because I have quite a few workspaces. There really is no reason to have more than one workspace because you can work with uh, something called working sets which is pretty much a bunch of applications and projects that are grouped together and shown at once, but I like to keep my work stuff and my private stuff separated completely. But, alright, let's go with workspace. Okay. When this opens up, we're going to be seeing the Eclipse welcome screen. We see this every single time we start a new workspace. What's happening now is the proper background documents are being created. It just takes a few minutes. It doesn't always take this long. And it's also because I'm working in a virtual machine, I don't really have the necessary RAM to make it work exactly as quickly as it should. But it should be all right. All right. This is the welcome screen. Really not much you need to do here. You can you have a couple of options, find out what's new. If you don't know what's old, then this is just kind of pointless. Tutorials, you could do that if you want. I really find no need for any of this, so I'm just going to go to the workbench. All right. This is your main area here. Uh, there, everybody has a very particular way of how they want to set up their workbench. I personally like to keep my outline over here with my projects. If you can get it to go over. All right. Task list. I like to have that under here. And I like to have my programming window as wide open as I can, as wide as I can, and as long as I can. And that is it. Uh, a couple things just to let you know. There are different perspectives that you can have. A perspective is just different little side windows and widgets that you use. Uh, and with quite a few things that you, uh, quite a few plugins will actually change the options available here. For example, if you have special collaboration um, subversioning software, for example, uh, installed, you'll have different perspectives that you can choose. The Probably the most important ones are Java and debugging, which is right there. Um, that's something important. And um, that is how you install the Java runtime and start Java Eclipse. In the next video, we will be doing a small Hello World tutorial. And I hope to see you then. Have a great day, and I will see you next time.